So here's me in 2018. I manage a team of 20, have a fancy title on my business card, and radiate a strong businesswoman energy. And by far, this was the most disastrous time of my whole career. You could always find me running, with a coffee in one hand, laptop in another, I was a fighter and an achiever. People around me seemed kind of passive to me sometimes, so I would poke them with a stick and would get impatient easily, but that's okay, I'm a manager, none of them can even comprehend the responsibility that I bear on my shoulders. All of this is what I thought successful manager looks like, you know, leader that pushes through. So that's what I became. But behind this picture, I simply didn't know how to handle the pressure of my role. I was anxious to a point I couldn't sleep, I pushed ridiculous expectations on my team and made them miserable. Should I even mention that I already had a family, a husband, a dog, and I didn't have time for any of them? I felt that manager's job is always like that, and either you handle it or you're just not made for it. And ironically, I always knew that I want to be a good manager, you know, the one that people don't write on Reddit about. But I was just so busy with my work that I didn't even have time to slow down and think about it. But then everything changed. My whole perception of it turned upside down when, for the first time, I've met a role model that was different. Almost by accident, I joined the team of manager who was empathetic, who listened to us, people in his team, did not dominate with his authority, and the most importantly, he was calm. Other managers could consider him sometimes uh, too calm and even slow, but it actually has nothing to do with the reality. He was incredibly productive, and he did it without this, you know, vibe of high energy, work hard, play hard type of attitude a lot of leaders have. His team felt ecstatic including myself. I remember the first time I've noticed this about this manager, I was like, whoa, like, it felt like I unlocked a cheat code, like, can, can a manager just do that? Like, is this legal? Is this allowed? Because it was so unbelievably different from everything that I observed from all other managers I've met. And I was also a manager at that point, so I remember thinking, wait, so you can be a manager and not suffer? because how he worked did not feel like suffering at all. It was eye-opening to me, and it started my journey of becoming a different leader. And if you've ever struggled with the same perception of a leadership job that I did, know that there are other ways. Ways that are more sustainable for you, because corporate is a long game, and managers who are going very intensively on things, they burn out easier, and managers actually rarely acknowledge that they even get burning out. And ways that will surprisingly make your team not less, but more productive in the long run. So, what is calm leadership? It's an approach to managing others where the leader is a steady force, steady force that guides the team through uncertainty. So it means when we as managers deal with the ambiguity of a business world and our work, which is a mandatory part, we do it without emotional attachment. It also means when we are anxious, we don't spill our own personal anxiety on our team, but also it means that we allow ourselves to work calmly, if that makes sense, because many of us have this perception, the idea of how are we expected to lead, that sometimes we don't allow ourselves to calm down, because this is what we think a manager is supposed to look like or act like. And finally, it means forgiving ourselves for not being a perfect performer or a manager or a perfect team with the perfect results, and prioritize team feeling safe over pushing for a short-term results from them. Through that, we help our teams, we're kind of enabling our teams to perform at their best without this burden of stress, without being overwhelmed by stress, which sometimes is a part of not only our job as managers, but their job as well. By the way, you don't have to be like a naturally calm person to practice a calm leadership. Uh, look at me, I'm not calm, I'm rather on more energetic side, but at work when things are getting shaky, people need reassurance and confidence from managers more than they need like a pure energy. Now, here's how it works. 
In a stressful situation, how do managers usually behave? For that, imagine a marketing team that is preparing for a campaign. The launch date of the campaign is the end of this week. One team member is responsible for a key part of the visuals and their work is delayed and we don't know why. So manager that is already stressed about the deadline becomes anxious and frustrated. And on a morning team call, what does this manager do? Usually call out this person who delayed something in front of the group. And also because manager already feels the pressure, they kind of want to translate this pressure to others to also increase a sense of urgency. So this manager can speak with a raised voice or like um, share the, express the fear that because of this delay, the whole project will fall apart. But what happens with the team after that? The anxiety of a manager first, it spreads to this person who delayed something and it also spreads to the rest of the team because they're worried that if they will delay something next time, they will be blamed. And maybe in this moment, the team will indeed do the job faster. But what about the long run? As managers, as leaders, we usually want for our employees to be engaged, to go, you know, above and beyond, to, to work and act like the company is actually theirs, you know, have this level of ownership. But look at the leaders, they're actually not ready to work as if the company belongs to employees. So we want to be able to show all kinds of teamwork and do sacrifices for the company. But leaders rarely sacrifice their comfort for the comfort of their employees. I would go above and beyond for you if I will know that you will do the same for me. And this chain of events starts with leaders, not with employees. Without this, we don't create a safe space and consequentially, we don't create teams that are great long term. Now, how do we as managers, as leaders get there? And there are two parts of it. One relates to how we treat our team and the second one about how we treat ourselves. Let's start with the team. And if we find ourselves as managers in a stressful situation, for example, our team is not doing what we want from them to do. First and foremost, we need to show empathy. So for example, instead of pushing straight away, we can ask, if something is wrong. If maybe a team member needs a help or maybe they don't understand something or maybe they have a challenge that they cannot overcome by themselves and they just need your help in hand or advice. As managers, we need to figure out how can we help them, not how can we push them harder. Because when you are trying to figure out how to help them, you actually show an example of you kind of sacrificing your time and energy and investing your time and energy into helping them succeed with their work. And they will never do for you what you are not willing to do for them. So you being the role model of that plants seeds of trust and cooperation. And I remember, I think Simon Sinek was saying that you cannot force trust and cooperation. You cannot just tell people, start trusting each other, start cooperating with each other. It doesn't work like that. But you can do it yourself and it creates the role model. It creates the culture. First comes the feeling safe. Then from that comes the trust in the team. When you're ready to give your time and energy and put your best efforts for your team in return, they will have you back and you will be able to delegate to them in the future with a peace of mind. And the second part of calm leadership is how do we treat ourselves? So here's the thing. We can barely radiate calmness if we cannot control our emotions under pressure or when we are stressed or anxious. And one of the most important skills here is not to freak out. We can in the room without witnesses, but we definitely should not do that in front of our team. Our work will always be ambiguous. Uh, we will always have a change. The higher we get as managers, the higher cost of the mistake of the decisions that we make. It is impossible to absolutely totally avoid stress. But first, we need to be able to control it. And you know, sometimes stress is like very prolongated. So it's also a skill of being able to like having things open for a long time, if that makes sense. So basically, not every something that causes us stress or anxiety in work can be resolved quickly. So sometimes we just have to accept it, switch to something else because this thing will not go away easily. All of that are the skills that we can train to be a better leaders. But apart from that, there is a thing that helped me personally tremendously to um, deal with emotions and in general, you know, like adapt this approach of a more calmer leadership. And it is to detach yourself from your work. I can literally hear the millennials telling me, I, I don't understand the concept. The problem that all of us have is that we associate ourselves 
super closely with our profession, with our role, with what we do. We practically associate ourselves with work. And yeah, there are super successful leaders who like immerse themselves in their work. Think about like any startup founder maybe, because it is their idea, they are so passionate about it, they have this unmatchable drive. But in reality, with time, it can turn kind of toxic. And they sometimes turn into managers who have a high level of internal anxiety that they kind of spread all over their employees and people who work for them, precisely because they are so immersed into the work that they do, to the extent that there is hard for them to control their emotions. But it doesn't mean that the calm leadership doesn't have this energy and drive with it. It just comes from a different place. It comes from cool goals, interesting goals that are developed together with people who will be achieving it, for example. And this energy comes from a feeling of safety inside this team. If I would have a chance to tell something to myself eight years ago when I was just starting a managerial job, first of all, I think I would give myself like an official allowance to be a calmer leader. I would tell myself that you don't need to manage others the way that everyone else around you does. So I would tell, trust your gut. It will lead you to be a better manager much more than then just like imitate the vibe of the leaders around you. And I would maybe tell her to forgive herself for not being like a perfect manager and a perfect performer. Because the thing is, when you learn how to be more forgiving towards yourself, magically you become more forgiving towards others, which makes you a better manager. I do believe that human skills are everything because being a manager implies power. And even with a small power, sometimes we can do horrible things if we don't just stay decent human beings. Usually in the end of each video, I recommend you another video to watch, but today is different because I have something very exciting to announce. I officially open slots for leadership coaching and mentorship. If you want to become a manager or maybe you're already an experienced leader, here's a page check how it works, what I can help you with, and see if it's for you or not, which is also totally cool. Either way, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you there.